my name is Chase Gibson. I'm a technical sales specialist with Mori Microwave. And today, we're going to take a look at how we can improve the VNA calibration, the validation of the calibration performed, and increase confidence in your measurements. But before we jump into this demo, let me ask you a few questions first. Have you ever taken measurements with what you thought was a well-calibrated VNA, only to find your results looking a little suspicious? Have you ever tried validating your VNA calibration but felt the pass-fail criteria decision was a bit ambiguous? Were you absolutely sure you defined your calibration kit coefficients in VNA settings properly, but later on thought maybe you didn't? If you can relate to any of these, how much time and money has this cost you and what damage has this done to your organization? In front of me, I have a typical S-parameter measurement system comprising of a VNA, cable assembly, VNA calibration kit, and VNA verification kit. This is likely similar to what you have in your lab, the only difference is that my system is being driven by Mori Microwave's Insight software platform. Insight is the industry's first commercial VNA calibration, validation, and S-parameter measurement software compatible with most commercial VNAs, which is designed to improve the VNA calibration and calibration validation process, giving you confidence in the quality of your calibration, hence the accuracy of your measurements. Now, let's jump right into how Insight can help you validate your system. Today's demonstration will concentrate on calibrating a VNA and validating that calibration with utmost confidence. To begin, we'll select the Calibrate, Validate, and Measure module. As you can see, calibration starts with the Profile Setup tab. This tab allows us to create a new calibration project which consists of all of our calibration settings. You also have the choice of loading a pre-saved setup or recall an existing calibration. This is incredibly useful in ensuring identical calibration settings are used each time and across multiple benches, resulting in a more consistent and repeatable calibration process. You can also choose whether to include measurement uncertainties or leave them out, and to fund whether the measurement setup will be connectorized or on wafer. For this demonstration, we're going to set up a new profile. In this case, we will include uncertainty as it is a critical part of our improved VNA calibration validation process. And lastly, we'll proceed with a connectorized setup. Next, we'll select a VNA from our database, define the ports, port power, averaging, and IF bandwidth. Preceding that, we will define the start and stop frequencies, the step size, and the number of points. Following that step, we will define our calibration method, connector type and gender, and specific calibration kit being used from our database. And finally, we can define cable and connector uncertainty so that they are included in our calibration and DUT measurements. I'm going to include the characterized uncertainty of the specific cable assembly being used today, since I mentioned earlier, uncertainty will be critical in our calibration validation process. For more information about characterizing uncertainty, please watch our Insight Uncertainty demonstration on YouTube. Now, back to the demo. Saving the setup creates that project file that can be reloaded later on or shared among colleagues to make sure everyone is calibrating the same way. Insight now prompts us to perform the same calibration defined earlier. In this case, it is asking us to measure an open, a short, and a load. For the sake of time, let's fast forward to the end of the calibration. Once the calibration is complete, Insight prompts us to validate. In the validation menu, we can choose either the legacy source match technique using an airline and short, or the more definitive verification kit technique. Since it is the source match technique that likely led to ambiguity over whether the calibration was good or not, we will use the verification kit technique instead. Mori verification kits come with characterized verification standards that are meant to mimic your specific device under test. What comes in the kit are precision loads that are used as embodiments of a well-matched one-port device, and for those poorly matched one-port devices, you can use the offset shorts included. And for those of you who are calibrating two-port, there is a precision airline as an embodiment of a well-matched two-port device, and a mismatched airline for the poorly matched two-port devices. We will then select the appropriate verification standard that best mimics our device under test, select the corresponding option in the software, and load the characterization data that is shipped with the kit. We will then connect the same standard to our newly calibrated VNA and take a measurement to compare the results. The closer the two measurements overlap, the more valid our VNA calibration. But how do you know what is close enough? Isn't this still a little ambiguous and subjective? Well, that's where measurement uncertainty comes in. Let's take a look at the factory characterized measurement data with uncertainty and the just measured data with uncertainty and compare the normalized error. Ultimately, you want your just measured data to overlap as much as possible with the factory measurement data. The regions where you see gaps is where the uncertainty contributions will be at its largest. 
You also have the choice to normalize the just measure data to the factory measure data to get a different perspective on the overlaps. One of the biggest benefits of enabling uncertainties is the pass-fail criteria. This graph will tell you whether you are good to go or you need to go back and recalibrate. If your normalized error is less than 1, you are good to go. Between 1 and 2, you may want to reconsider recalibrating, and anything over 2, don't take the chance, just recalibrate. In my case, the normalized error is lower than 1, so we are good to start measuring our DUT and have confidence that the results will be accurate. As we showed in our demonstration, using shareable standardized calibration project files will help ensure you are calibrating your VNA the same way every time across all VNAs and ensure consistent measurements. Furthermore, we have improved the calibration validation process, replacing ambiguous and subjective source match validation with individually characterized standards that mimic your device under test. Finally, by using measurement uncertainties with our validation process, we can use normalized error to determine definitively when the calibration is good or needs to be redone therefore leading to increased confidence in your measurements. For more information regarding Insight, please visit moreamw.com. Thanks for tuning in.